Hello, Space Nerds. It is July 27th, 2018. It's been about four months since my last video update, so it's high time we had another. So here we go. In those four months, there have been almost 200 commits, and those have been all kinds of things. Bug fixes, feature enhancements, and there's been almost 7,000 new lines of code added and about a little less than 2,000 lines of code deleted. We ran a couple of sessions at uh, HackRVA, the hackerspace in Richmond, Virginia, which went great. We found a few bugs, the most interesting of which I found that I had a bug that caused the network traffic to scale as the square of the number of clients, which is pretty bad, but normally only have one client. Uh, one times one is one, so I hadn't noticed before. Without fixing that bug, I could run about five clients on my laptop before things started getting a little weird. Um, once I fixed that, I could run as many as 16 is all I tried, and it was fine. Um, here's a screenshot showing 10 clients running. Here's a screenshot. You'll notice at the bottom, this is actually a Windows system. One of the HackRVA members got Space Nerds in Space to compile on Windows 10 using the Linux subsystem. The performance wasn't great, but it did work. I mentioned to another HackRVA member, Max Redman, that I wasn't completely happy with Pocket Sphinx for speech recognition. I thought an Android app might be a good idea. And the next thing I know, he made one called Space Nerds Communicator, which is open source and it's on GitHub. There's documentation on the Space Nerds in Space website on how to use this app. One of the new features I've added is a pull-down menu system on the Demon screen. This lets the Game Master, for example, select the type and faction of the ships they want to add into the game. And there are a number of other things that you can do with the pull-down menu system. One of the problems that any space game runs into eventually is visibility of distant ships. It's all too easy to end up with tiny dots on the screen that are not very exciting to look at and hard to see. To address this problem, I came up with an idea inspired by a couple of different things. First by the television show The Expanse and second by an arc welder. It occurred to me that an arc welder has a very bright light that's very flickery and attracts the eye. So I thought the exhaust from these rockets should be similarly bright and flickery. So I added a kind of arc welder type flare to the exhaust. It seems to make it much easier to see distant ships. So seems like a good idea. Another minor improvement I did was to actually render the space monster tentacles on the science screen. Previously I'd only rendered the torso, but now the tentacles flail about on science just as they do in the main view. Another new thing that I've added is homing missiles. On the weapon screen you can now press N to launch a homing missile at whatever nearby ship your weapons are pointed at. NPC ships can also launch homing missiles at the player or at other NPC ships. It could be that some balancing is needed. Maybe these, what, these are too powerful. We'll see. On the nav screen, these missiles show up as blinking yellow missiles. Finally, thanks to my patrons, I was able to rent a digital ocean server to use for distributing art assets. This means that you no longer have to build all of the OpenSCAD models, which takes forever. Instead, you can just type make update dash assets and it will download all of these from my server along with all of the assets for extra solar systems and so on. Well, that's about all I've got time for today. So if you like this, uh, hit subscribe, head to the GitHub page and uh, star the project. And if you want to support Space Nerds in Space Development, head over to Patreon and become a patron. Thanks a lot for watching.